are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have another show lined up. For y'all, we have our special guest for today is Regina Huber. She serves as the CEO of Transform Your Performance and leading with bold, value-driven, and heart-centered approaches to leadership for both herself and others. She is going to tell her, tell us a little bit about her background story, and we're going to learn a little bit about her. But you can go visit her website. It's uh, transformyourperformance.com. Once again, Regina, thank you for your time. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me on, Shimaya. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And I'm really, really looking forward to this conversation. So yes, here I am. And today's topic, uh, outside of getting your background story, is uh, from freaking out to freaking amazing. So before we dive into that topic, kind of tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how you became the CEO of Transform Your Performance. Yes, it's sort of a long story, but I'm going to keep it uh, shortish. <laughs> uh, I grew up in on a farm in a small village in Germany, and I'm actually currently in in Lyon, France. Um, and uh, you know, I've just traveled a lot uh, in a nutshell, right? Uh, so I, I, my business is based in New York City. I lived in Argentina twice, in Brazil twice. I lived in Spain for seven years. I lived on the west coast of um, the US on the East Coast in, in New York City, um, also a little bit in Miami, Miami Beach, and so on and so forth. So I've, I've traveled a lot also on the African continent in the last few years. I've always been uh, out and about, and I think um, what really brought me to this, con- uh, to this coaching and, and speaking business was insatiable curiosity in a way because I just had a lot of really amazing experiences and also some not so pleasant ones of course because I've always been taking uh, uh, big risks in my life you could say and um, and this is how eventually about um, about uh, let me now calculate it about uh, 10 years ago or so um I started working on the current business and uh, ever since then I've refined it, of course. I have created new frameworks and new approaches, a a very unique uh, coaching approach as well based on all my eclectic experience that um, I have had the pleasure and sometimes the pain <laughs> to grow uh, to grow through and that's why you said you know from freaking out to freaking amazing I've certainly been in several situations in my life where I felt like freaking out uh, or where I was freaking out indeed but I also believe that there's always a way to get back to freaking amazing so this is this is how I live my life uh, these days, you know, with that knowledge and just knowing that we can always bounce back and that uh, as long as we are able to see our so-called adversities as opportunities for growth, we can, we have a choice and, and we have options to make the best of them. Yeah, I like that. And we're going to have to dive into the freaking out part of that portion of your life because I feel like everything yet you do, like you, you didn't like say every single little thing because it probably take you two hours to say it. But you're also a writer yeah. of uh, Speak Up, Stand Out, and Shine. And you also have addition, uh projects of being a co-author for three other books, contributing to articles, magazines in both the United States and in Africa. So with all those amazing accomplishments, plus the ones we haven't mentioned, let's go back to to the freaking out period. Take us back to the period of life when you were uh, hitting adversity and kind of tell us that story. Yeah, absolutely. And there are several stories for sure. (laughs) So, you know, I just lived through a very challenging situation right now, which I'm uh, not uh, talking too much about yet because I'm sort of still, you know, figuring out a few little bits and pieces. And uh, 
And so that's going to be another surprise uh, chapter at some point. <laughs> but also because you mentioned the book, I just wanted to quickly say uh, that the, the term from freaking out to freaking amazing really came about when I was writing the book, because the book is about how to go from speaking anxiety to positive excitement when it comes to speaking in any challenging business situation it doesn't always have to be from a stage or on a podcast or as a you know a famous public speaker we speak in 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 business situations all the time whether it's in a meeting and negotiations etc so what i really wanted people to be able to do also in that setting was to go from freaking out to freaking amazing with the tools in the book so i just wanted to quickly mention that because a lot of people really freak out when they you know, hear public speaking and they they get really nervous and their butterflies go too crazy in their stomach. So so it has sort of many meanings for me, but to go back to your question, actually, while there were several, uh, you know, very, very serious situations in my life, as I said before, I, I lived in Argentina twice, I lived in, in Brazil twice. The first times of each were in sort of uh, employee situations. So the first time in, in Brazil, for sure, in Sao Paulo, and then in Argentina, it was an uh, it was a it was an ex- external consultant situation. But later on, I owned my businesses there, and that is, of course, always a whole other challenge. And uh, so, in Argentina, for example, I built and ran a, a bed and breakfast, and. Um, I had an investor's visa for that. I, I had certain, you know, it came with certain stipulations and requirements. So, for example, I had to open a business and employ at least one person within a year, which in itself was was challenging because it was a brick and mortar business. I had to I had to build out a house. I had to first of all find it and buy it, etc. But I got it to work. It was challenging, but I, it, it worked, right? The business was open. But then the, the other problem with that was that they don't actually give you the license with that, that time. And it's a generally known problem, but I didn't, of course, know it before the whole process started. And I later found out that everybody was just paying the, the city officials off. And I just really didn't want to do that. And eventually they also showed up at my door and I, I just refused to pay them off. And I wanted to do everything correctly. Uh, and I actually won a lawsuit against the city of Buenos Aires because just because I wanted to stay in integrity and, and stand up for myself rather than, you know, falling into this corruption scheme and that's how I won because I was sort of lucky uh, if, if there's such a thing because the judge uh, who was uh, a woman not that this is super important but uh, she she was um she said when she heard corruption she said tell me more right and that's what I did uh, to a certain extent and that's how how I didn't have to to pay that fine that they wanted to impose on me because I didn't pay them off. And, uh, you know, nobody paid for my expenses at the time, but it was still a big victory for me, apart from not having to pay that that fine. And then later, and there was another even much bigger story. You know, that, that one was sort of small again <laughs> compared to the next one, but it was, you know, it was quite serious, Shemaya, when when I was in the while I was in the midst of it, because I felt very, um, I, I didn't feel intimidated, but I felt a little bit invaded, if that makes sense. You know, when people uh, attack you for something that is not really that you haven't done. Right. That's just very, I feel very vulnerable in that sense uh, when that happens. So, but anyway, so the second story was, once I was sort of a little bit just tired of having a better breakfast because I had to spend so much time at home for that, although I did enjoy the interaction with, with clients, but I also loved dancing at the time. And in Argentina, of course, it was mostly tango. And and then I also, but I also did some other dances, different Brazilian dances, capira and zouk and all of that. And so eventually I decided to, to move to Brazil, uh, where I'd lived before, but in a different city. So this time it was to Rio de Janeiro. And I really loved that city. It's a beautiful place. Have you ever been? No, I haven't. Uh, it's it's a really amazing place to travel to. There is a lot of crime, but 
you know, if you know how to move and if you get some guidance, it's it's fine, right? So uh, anyway, I, I really love that city. And it's, it's to me, it's a place without equal. And uh, it's so unique in so many ways. It has the ocean, the rainforest right in the city. And I really fell in love with it the first time I ever visited it. You could say even, you know, many years before I moved there. And although the first time I went to Rio de Janeiro, I witnessed the shooting right away, right? But I, I totally enjoyed the climate, the tropical vegetation, the dancing, and especially the somebody Gafira dancing. And I, I was dreaming about that new project and this new business. I was trying to figure out what to do next. And I did figure it out, but... I partnered up with somebody that was not such a great idea. And so this time things just didn't go that well. You know, once again, I, I did the, something similar as in Argentina. I took a huge risk. I put all my money, all my savings that I got back from that business in Argentina. I put it all into a business because also I wouldn't have gotten credit there, like a loan. You know, I had to pay cash. So, uh, so anyway, so these are all my savings of all my previous in, work life basically and again it was a brick and mortar business so i partnered up with somebody this time and sadly that guy who i thought was my friend <laughs> turned out to be much the opposite and turned out to be fraudulent and that eventually you know ended up costing my uh, me my business um in which i had invested quite a lot of time again, lots of effort, lots of love, really, you know, energy. And I lost a bunch of money because I had to resell everything after some time. It just was not without his name. It was no longer, it wouldn't have had the the, the, the right traction, so to speak. I was also paying for this trademark and whatnot. Although he was only a partner in one part of the business, but it was so heavily um, impacted by that, that it just wasn't sustainable. The, the costs were too high. So I had to make a very, very difficult decision to, to close that business down and sell everything at a loss and whatnot. And, you know, at first, when, when you, when you realize what's really happening, you don't want to see it. Right. You, you just want to escape the situation at first when it's a really difficult situation. I'm sure you've also sometimes been in really tough ones, right, Jemaya? I mean, a lot of people so, can say they had some storms. <laughs> right. I know nobody, right? Everybody has had something. And then for everybody, it looks different. But um, so I had to just really pull myself together and clean up the mess as painful as it was to go through those individual stages of this experience and uh, selling the house again and, you know, everything in it that I had put together with so much dedication also because I did have a limited budget, right? So it all takes a bit longer. I had bought a lot online, used, whatnot, but, but, you know, it was just really painful and um, it took me a long while to recognize the blessing in this experience and to really see the lesson in it. But uh, I was gladly, also because I had really great friends who had studied holistic modalities, which I had studied at the same time with them. So I could help myself eventually, but also they helped me as well. Um, so eventually I was able to step out of this victim mode, which is never helping anybody. So if people constantly complain about the situation. You know, we just need to remember that that does not help us at all, even if we blame others. It's just not helping us. So I, I really wanted to step out of this poor me mode. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it wasn't a, process from one day to the next. I, I have to admit that, right? But over time, I was able to really step into a more empowering mindset and and then um, get stuff done and and find a way. And uh, it, it took a while, but it it was just very cumbersome because I don't I don't know if some of you listeners know that, but you know, and I don't know how it is now, so I don't want to talk about now, but back then, I found out, uh, and a lot of people told me that, that 
closing a business was actually almost harder than opening a business in, in, in the city of Rio de Janeiro sometimes. And I, you know, I paid this accounting person, the CPA, he helped me. I paid him twice because it was not, so it was just like not a very enjoyable process to say the least. <laughs> and it was, I was close to freaking out several times for sure. But eventually then uh, I decided that, well, I wanted to stay half, half, like half time there, half, t- half time maybe in New York City because I eventually also lost my investor's visa. Also, again, she might, you know what, guess why? Because I didn't pay the people in the immigration office off. So they kept losing one piece after the other of my documentation. And that was a, a phone, like those yellow pages phone books in the past. Mm-hmm. Like a full book sick of documentation, which costs a lot of money too. But so they were just losing that over time. And, and, and I, it was just, it was just a really, really tough process. And eventually I said, look, I just don't want to play this game anymore. I did not want to pay them off. And I, in a way you could say I lost, but I guess I just moved on, you know? And, Speaking of that, once again, listen, I refocus right talking to our guest, Virginia Huber. What time period was it like after that situation got mm-hmm. resolved? Did you, in the midst of that, find your way going to New York? Or was it after that when you find your way going to New York? What was your next opportunity? Yeah, so I, I said, look, I, I, I think I need to go somewhere else and start from scratch because I wouldn't, you know, they, they wouldn't renew my investor's visa. And what, what is another place that really attracts me at this time? And I said, okay, New York, you know, I had been to New York on short trips, but I had never really spent that much time there. So I, so I went there for a shorter trip and to just really figure it out a little bit. I put everything in storage for us because I wasn't ready to move yet, you know? Yeah. I really loved that city. I loved the dancing here. I loved my activities, my friends. And I had thought that I would stay there maybe for the rest of my life. Although I don't say that anymore now. ever, (laughs) Because I just know myself too well that, you know, I don't, I might just not, if I say now where I am now, I say for the rest of my life, that might not be true either. And that's okay. But, but anyway, so I, 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 I went to New York and then I, as I said, I, I wasn't ready to really move everything. So I uh, put everything in storage and a lot of things were actually stolen in storage too, but that's a whole other story. So <laughs> then I went through a whole, uh, a whole detachment process because I left about 35 boxes of books behind in um, six different languages. And I loved my books. Every time I moved, I would usually unpack my books first together with my mattress because I needed to sleep on something. It would always be like my mattress and my books, right? But uh yeah, so this time they didn't come with me. Uh, but you know it, it was only after like uh a half year or even more that I figured out that the visa was no longer coming through um and it wasn't gonna be renewed. So then I, uh, I just, uh, unless I paid them, right. And I just really didn't want to do that. So, so that's when I decided that I would move. Um, and, and, and I was still cleaning up mess to call it something because it just takes so long to get all the paperwork resolved. You know, so I was traveling back and forth, first of all, because of the visa situation, but also because of the, the business paperwork. It it wasn't just done in a week. I wouldn't have been able to do that, meaning that my energy was a bit dispersed at first because, of course, I had to be in several places with my mind uh, at the same time. But I started building this business. I started networking, building a network. I didn't have a network in New York City, right? So I had to really pull myself together. My My confidence had been really, really badly affected. My self-esteem had been affected. I sometimes say it was below zero at the time. So I had to really rebuild it from scratch. 
and uh, and I had to go out network and meet people and talk about a potential new business that I didn't have a clear idea of yet, but I had to start talking about it because that's how it works, right? That's how we gain clarity ourselves about what we really want to do, who we want to support uh, by meeting people, by, you know, uh, f- writing things down, by learning how a coaching business even works because I had had very different businesses in the past. So I had to also get coaching, invest in myself as well, and all these different things at the same time. So, of course, without that pre that that previous chapter, so to speak, it could have been faster. That slowed me down a little bit in the beginning, but but it was it was processing and uh, and progressing and 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 it it was you know it's okay it's a process I believe um, and um, I started speaking I started doing some of my own events to gain practice and to even also just talk in English more again because I had been speaking Spanish and Portuguese for seven years for the most part and to just really get back into uh into into myself and say okay you know what I can do this I just because something didn't work out as I expected it to work out and I was disappointed by somebody or I had a you know I'm not saying this in 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 a, in a sense of blaming but that's how I felt right um so that that didn't have to be the end it could be a new beginning and then i try to figure out how i could pull all this different eclectic experience together into something meaningful and actually help others um go through challenging situations in 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 a in in in, in a in their own way but based on what all the all the experience and expertise that I had gained through my experiences in a way, right? Also through my studies, but uh, very much through my experiences and my learnings. And that's how I um, created this very, my very unique and holistic coaching approach. Um, I call it transformational leadership coaching. But of course, other people could call it the same too, and it's still a different approach. Uh, we all have, as coaches, we we have our different ways of coaching and uh, different people who feel attracted to our approach through who we are, right? Yeah, yeah. And speaking of that, now we're going from uh, freaking out to freaking amazing. And- amazing, yeah. You as the CEO uh, transform your your pref your prep excuse me performance yeah performance <laughs> I want to say preference uh, transform your performance. I mean, we have a little idea the motivation behind it, but at what moment did it become reality for you that this is a new uh, business for you to tackle? Well. As you can probably also see from the name, performance has many, many meanings, right? You can, you can say, okay, it's work performance. It's, it's a, it's a stage performance. It's your, uh, your, I don't know, your, uh, performance as in sports or whatever it is, right? So it, it really is valid for all those situations. But of course, I mostly nowadays work with people uh, to help them in their professional arena. Also, always though, not forgetting about the rest of their lives, right? Because we sometimes look at uh, our the what we call areas of our lives as if they were separate entities, but that's not really true. It's a, it's a holistic phenomenon. And uh, that's why um, I believe a holistic approach is, is the appropriate way to, to create significant change. But of course it also looks different for everybody. And for some people, the main thing uh, right now is just to get a promotion or, or, or a raise or both. Right. And for some other people, it's, it's to reduce their stress levels or to somehow find a new job or get prepared for job interviews, whatever it is. So I mostly right now work with employees and with uh, leaders in, in, in uh, organizations, but also organizations really 
of all sizes. Um, I work also with with business owners. It's just been the, the in, in more recent years. Uh, I have had more clients uh, in the corporate world, and especially also in financial services, just because uh, you know I, I I spent most of the time in New York and you know, networking and so on. Um, but I also have had the pleasure to work with very very different people. Like you know, the word diverse has become. Has, has gotten such a weird connotation nowadays with all the political um, agenda behind it. But uh, I, I think it's safe to say that I have very organically attracted very different people with different backgrounds. Uh, I also currently, for example, work with a client in, in Botswana, um, you know, and it's it's just been so enriching for me as well in that sense and also because I've of course traveled a little bit more in Africa in the last few years uh, but uh, to get back to your question well you know it, it was sort of a, again it was a process in the beginning I actually was thinking I wanted to work mostly with performing artists so in, in the beginning the performance came from that angle and then um, as I was networking more turned out that a lot of women turned toward me and said, we need what you have, what you have to offer us. So I started working with more women. And at first it was mostly entrepreneurial women. And then uh, I just met more and more employees. And, and this is how it, it, it gradually sort of drifted toward more employees and, and eventually uh, really also uh, leaders at all levels and I, I really love value driven work working with value driven leaders with heart driven leaders with leaders who are not afraid to stand up for what's right hence the word bold because it's become harder and harder for leaders nowadays if they don't swim with the mainstream narrative for example then you know they're uh, very easily ousted and and just not accept it. And it's, um, I think it's, it's just really important to stand our man or our woman and to, to really stand up for what's right and, 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 and speak up for it as well. And that's why I just love to work with, with, with leaders in general who, who want to create more humane workplaces. I talk a lot about humanizing the workplace, right? I've written about it. I've done webinars with two partners in Africa about this topic. Um, and uh, it's 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 also about this new consciousness. Uh, I've written about that as well, the new consciousness of uh, love, compassion, and co-creation that I think we need to bring more into the business world. But of course, you know, I, different people come with different requests and, and needs. So for some people, we talk, we work mostly on upgrading their leadership skills, uh, on upgrading something that is called conversational intelligence and trust building and all these different valuable aspects of leadership. And for others, it's they, they want to step up to the next level and to reach their next goal in their careers. So I, I like, I like to really adapt to my clients' needs. I, I do, I don't do just like pre-designed packages. I just, you know, I, I, I have a very customized uh, way of working with my clients after defining and analyzing what their needs are and whether it's even a good fit for us to work together. And then, of course, I also do trainings. I uh, I do speaking engagements, both uh, virtually and in person. Lately, it's been more virtual, but I definitely want to go back to more in-person speaking as well because it's just a lot of fun to, to also, um, you know, to also interact with the audience directly. And you just stay busy. Let's just keep it real. I mean, you just, I don't know when you ever get to take a break because uh, you also hosted your own television show and, and that was, uh, what's your spark? Tell us a little bit about that because as if you're not busy already, you found time to do that as well. 
Well, I, yeah, it was called What's Your Spark? It was a, uh, for Win Win Women. It was also on Roku TV. And I, I actually decided to not do that anymore exactly for that reason, Shimaya, because it was just getting a bit much because it was a weekly show and there was no option to make it monthly or bi weekly. And it's just a lot of time that goes into it, right? It was a lot of fun at the same time. What's Your Spark was, uh, we, we, we covered a lot of different topics, but it's really about pe- for people to to find what their unique brilliance is and to to be able to know, own, and show it and shine with it. So I also shared practical tools, like one that just comes to mind real quickly is how to how to write an effective vision. Some other times I had some guests on that I interviewed about topics that were relevant to 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 my overarching theme. I, I talked a lot. I had a whole series about freedom and what that means to people because I'm a very freedom loving person and uh, I like to say sometimes everything. I do is in the service of freedom. And I like to always give whatever my clients come for in the first, you know, when they, when they call me to work with me, I always also like to give them a piece of freedom, whatever that looks like for everybody and whether they notice that or not. (laughs) So, you know, that these are all really great things. I was also, it was so fun. I, I was just reminded of this the other day because a contact from Cameroon reached out on LinkedIn and I was on a, on a, she invited me to be on a radio show there. And then she also got me in a TV show there, which was a total surprise to me. It was so fun though. It was one of the last days of my stay in Cameroon and I literally had two clean outfits left and, and one that was, you know, could have been TV fit. (laughs) So they called me in the morning to come on the midi show. So on the, on the, on the 12 o'clock, you know, noon show, it was a bilingual show, French and English. And I would, I, I just, I just said, okay, where am I going to get, let me get a taxi, right? What clean clothes do I have? And I had to be there, of course, like two hours before to make them whatnot or, or an hour and a half. And, and I, they made me dance on TV and it was just a lot of fun. I had a wonderful moderator. Um, I had met her before actually because she was also the MC for the, for the conference that I had co-hosted. There was two other ladies, but you know, I was, it was just so much fun. And sometimes you just have to take the opportunity, even if it seems like you're not prepared, you know, and then sometimes it's the best thing. <laughs> yeah. It sounds and like you just, uh, it sounds like you just take these moments and just go. Like, yeah. obviously you prepared to do it because the person that invited you for that, you know, show would never ask you to be on there and think you'd be a good fit. So for you to always be in a situation, I almost feel like it goes back to the title of the show, from freaking out to freaking amazing. Like, you have these moments where it's like, <laughs> it can be chaos, but then right. you just go with it and then it becomes this amazing experience. Right, exactly. I mean, I was at that hotel. I had no cell phone that was working there. So there was one phone at the reception and the hotel owner knocks on my door. It's a small hotel in in Yaoundi, Cameroon. So knocks on my door and says, hey, you got to come to the phone. The TV is on the phone. And I run over, right? And and then (laughs) they say, well, uh, I'm just the messenger here, the guy on the phone said, but you you expect it here at, uh, you know, in about, it was in about two hours or so. So I had to like literally just figure everything out. And, and then I was in a huge traffic jam with literally cars bumping into our taxis from behind. It was a crazy traffic morning in Yaoundé, but we made it on time. And I was sort of, yes, at the first moment, you know, freaking out a little bit. Oh, what am I going to do? Do I have clothes still, you know, and whatnot? And and yes, and then we always figure it out somehow. And then it was, in fact, freaking amazing to be on that show just because of the fun. With your experience being in all these different places, I mean, international, not, not just in one country, in many countries, different cultures, everything. Mm -hmm. Is there a common thread 
that you found as you met new people in different places? And if so, what is that common thread that seems to work? Well, it's, uh, I believe what it is, it's to be open. You know, when you, when you travel a lot, that opens our minds, right? When we travel, we, our horizon opens, we, it sort of becomes easier to understand other people. We don't only uh, part from our own little world because we see that there are many different worlds and many different ways of living. And the, and most of the time, the way I traveled was by myself or, you know, yes, in Cameroon, I had some people waiting there. Yes, in, for example, in Uganda, I went there. I had some people waiting, but that hasn't always been the case and and they are not always there and i would you know in rwanda i would take a a a, a motorbike taxi and these and the, the the drivers they they usually did not speak french or english uh, so you somehow, you know, you get to know people in a different way and to understand people in a different way and where they're coming from as you, as you think about those interactions. And why do they eat this and not that? And why do they dance in this way and not that? So I love dance, right? So I watched the different dances and I had never, I'd seen a lot of different African dances before, but I had never in my life seen Rwandan dance uh, the way I saw it there and got to experience it. I was invited to this, to this wedding and it was like so amazing. I mean, you know, it was a completely new experience. And with every new experience, whether it's talking, whether it's, you know, how people approach you in the street or how, how they react to you or how they behave in, in, in certain, at certain events or how they work. Um, how they dance and and what their cultural expression is there's always this reflection going on in my mind about okay where is this coming from okay well why do they use these words and you know even language itself that's why i love learning languages some languages they don't have translation uh, or some words in some languages don't have direct translations because we think differently and i believe that when you go out and are open and listen and watch and observe, um, then you can always connect with people. I think that's the the threat, the common thread. Once again, this might be but focused radio. Makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh -huh. Once again, listen, I'll refocus radio talking to our guest Regina Huber and. You can go to her website, uh, transformyourperformance.com and learn more about her company and, and what she does with her clients. Real quick, as we kind of uh, wind down here, tell us a little bit about uh, your business and your mission statement. And it kind of feels like it's just been throughout this whole interview because of your stories in this mission statement, but kind of share with the audience a little bit more about your business. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I, I do transformational leadership coaching. I work, I usually work with a lot of women, but not only also work with men and uh, help them reach their next career goal and, or, become better leaders and that always also uh, includes better leaders of self because I believe that any type of leadership starts with self-leadership and we can only be authentic, authentic leaders and uh, uh, sustainably effective leaders if we really know how to lead ourselves in the first place. So that's uh, I, my, in my understanding, the most important leadership trait or skill um, that we need as leaders. I am always available for speaking engagements, whether it's for a 
a virtual session. I just recently uh, did one for a large financial firm for the Women's Network. We had uh, over 155 people on, but it could also be a a training for a small group, of course. Uh, I do workshops, etc. It's all customized work, right? And then I have, uh, of course, also more like signature work, like for... um, for example, for a company event, I have several different topics on my website as well. And that's about it. I do have a YouTube channel as well and a LinkedIn uh, newsletter that people can subscribe to where they can uh, receive free resources. And um, yes, and the book Speak Up, Stand Out and Shine is on Amazon for anybody who feels like they can use some tools to prepare mentally, physically, and energetically for speaking situations, such as speaking on podcasts, on radio shows, on TV, (laughs) from a stage, or, you know, in a job interview, or in, in a negotiation, or whatever it is for everybody. We all have those situations. And you come across as a very positive person. And hearing, like, all the different stories of moments of you know the unknown you know the storm comes and you're like okay i'm freaking out but then it turns to you know freaking amazing did you always uh keep that in your 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 back of your mind as far as staying positive and upbeat like did you get that from your parents or did you have a person that you were close to that kind of taught you that or was that just what you've been like your whole life i think i wasn't always that positive person necessarily you know but i i do believe that i well i hear that a lot actually and that actually makes me smile a lot because you know it's not that i'm always happy of course you know a freaking amazing life I also actually have a website, a small website with that name, Freaking Amazing Life, the freaking with a, an apostrophe and, you know, not without the G at the end, just for some, a, a new, a new uh, product and project that I'm doing. But I, I believe that a freaking amazing life doesn't mean that life is always perfect. It doesn't mean that we no longer have challenges. It just means that we have learned to, to, confront those challenges or to just really you know no longer react so automatically as 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 if we were on autopilot but really respond more consciously and um i and you know what Shimaya, I, I know so much about what is really going on in the world in the background if i only focused on that every day then it it and I didn't have a positive spirit, then I probably, you know, would be depressed all day long, but that doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help humanity. And I believe that, you know, if, if, if I, if, if we just make somebody smile every day, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it it does create a wave, you know, and it starts with ourselves. So if I get up in the morning and I do not feel good and I don't always feel great when I wake up, I can tell you that, but I have my routines. I have my tools that I have created. I have my ways to get to a better place when I don't feel great, right? And I also have always, I will always make the time talking to what you mentioned earlier. I'm always, yeah, I'm busy, but I will always make the time for dancing. For example, I actually went out late last night dancing because there was uh, there was only that late opportunity for me because you know there are no classes right now in terms of like I like to do a really intense African dance classes and things like that so I've done a few yoga classes since I've been here but but I ha- I haven't really had that so I said okay I'll just go I'm, I'm gonna go Kizomba and Simba dancing uh at night and I, I took my I, I even went there by bike because it's 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 pretty warm here right now <laughs> so yeah. I took the bike there and I came back but and I really need this you know even if it's late sometimes it's fine it's fine we don't always have to live up to other people's rules right 
And if to me that means if I did not have meetings this morning at seven and I need to sleep in a little bit because I need to recover and be fresh for the rest of the day for my clients who I meet with later in the day, then I will do that because who dictates my life? I believe it should be me. I should have that freedom. And I don't, you know, I don't go out late dancing every night. I'm just, this is really just an example, but I sometimes, I need to adapt my needs to the requirements of, of the work I do, but I always will also make space for me and for what I need, because otherwise it's really, really easy for us to get burned out or to, you know, just not stay healthy and, 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 get on a on a more negative vibe right long yeah. answer to a short question <laughs> no it's, it's fine it's fine it, it kind of goes back to what you mentioned earlier about experience all different cultures and you know people you, you mentioned openness uh, that's an approach to have and i heard someone say uh to me before uh this in conversation you know, an open parachute works better than a closed one. And I think that's a good way to look at that because even when, like you said, things happen where you just adjust to it, you know, you have time for your self-care, time for you. And uh, speaking to other women who are CEOs and business uh, professionals, what would you say generally to them? for them to continue to just, you know, remain joyful for what their calling is, whatever it is that they're serving for, you know, or the gifts and talents that they're using to serve. What would you say generally to women who are leaders in their business to stay motivated like yourself? Yeah, not just women, really everybody, you know, it's just really about take your Take chances sometimes. It's okay to take risks. and It's okay if not everything works out as expected. Because, no, yes, I took a lot of risks and some did not work out as, as I wanted them to work out, for sure. But I had a lot of really freaking amazing moments in my life when I took risks. And I lived experiences that not a lot of people have lived. Like... I have seen parts of Johannesburg that not even my local friends have been to. I have seen, you know, I've done a lot of things that very few people have done. And it's not always climbing high mountains. Uh, you know, for everybody, again, it's different, right? right? So I think just really look at what life has to offer to you. They're always endless options and opportunities, even if it doesn't look like it at the moment. Yeah. Like, like for example, so if you love to travel and you don't have a lot of money, well, I sometimes did not pay rent in New York while I traveled and I traveled cheap. I traveled, I spent less, less money traveling than being home sometimes. It's just an example, right? Well, you make it look easy. Yeah, I know it's not easy. But when people go to your website, uh, transformyourperformance.com, they can see just how busy you really are. Uh, if we went through every detail of what you do, we'd probably be on the show for three more hours. But when you look at the opportunity you have right now with your platform, it looks like it's safe to say you're in the stage of really paying it forward to people, you know, helping them learn from the lessons that you've already learned from how important is it for someone like yourself to be in position now to really add that value for those who are kind of fresh they're in the stage of freaking out but they're not yet in that stage of freaking amazing well you know what i'm always here for people i put out a lot of free content right so if somebody isn't ready to sign up for a paid program, they can get uh, tons of value online uh, from me and other people as well. 
on YouTube, on uh, you know other channels, maybe or on on, on LinkedIn as well, and uh, or sign up for my mailing list. Uh, right now, I'm uh, I'm figuring out a little bit of a tech issue with that too, so it's not always perfect, as I said, you know. But but it's uh, but I think it should be working again. Anyway, so so there's. There's a there's a ton of free stuff out there. I've I've written so many articles. You know they are usually unpaid. So we also put a lot of work and effort into um, into just putting stuff out there. And it's not well. Yes, it is for promotional purposes as well. But it's also to support people who uh, might not be ready to sign up for a coaching program or who might. Uh, be low on budget right now. I've also done a few, uh, a few programs, for example, with a team of young people in, in Rwanda where they, we did an exchange. They offered me accommodation in exchange because they didn't have the budget as a group, right? But they actually, we did a lot of mindset work and, um, sort of, Miraculously, on the last day of the workshop, additional budget showed up for them, which was not for me, but for them, for their project. Right? And they, and then, and and they, and they made it. You know, they created something really awesome. So, you know, it, it depends on the situation. <clears throat> it's. Uh, it, I've done free speaking. I've done paid speaking, but. I, it's just about not taking advantage of people in terms of, you know, when you hear that a speaker also speaks for free, well, there's a reason for that and there's a place for that. Uh, but not everything can be free because we also need to pay our bills, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's true. And man, I can probably go another rabbit hole with that. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave it there because, uh, yeah, you you really have a lot of uh, value, and that's really great for a show like this because the whole premise of the show is not just help people find their purpose, but help those who are struggling with their purpose because sometimes your purpose, it starts growing, but the individual has to grow too because if you, you know, let your dream kind of just benefit yourself, then it's not really a real dream because a real dream, it benefits others and it carries a lot of weight. And you know what they say, success rent is due every day. So you, you got to get used to the freaking out, uh, you know, portions of life because it's going to happen. It's not if it's going to happen, it's just when it's going to happen. But you mastering those different phases by making life freaking amazing Man, that's that's what it's about. And you also have uh, confidence because being able to go to all those different places to live, starting, uh, you know, those different businesses, speaking different languages, you know, experiencing different cultures, you have to also be uh, sure of yourself. And I promise the last question real quick. What is your secret sauce? to believe in yourself so that way you grow with your confidence. What is my secret sauce? Well, to constantly, constantly upgrade my leadership of myself, I believe. You know, it's really to and 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 it doesn't always have to be hard work. It's it's just like the the continuity and the continuity in um uh, finding a way every single day, even when it's not so easy, right? Because we all have those moments when it we have either a setback or when it's just not so easy, but really having, have, have first of all, having my tools, you know, uh, there, there are many different tools that we can find online and in other people's work as well, but having a few tools that are always available. And then also just to look back and see, okay, I've achieved everything that, you know, I've, I've been in so many situations where I thought this cannot be resolved and there's always a way. There's always a way. And sometimes what I also do is I look at a situation from above as if I was looking at the situation uh, from the perspective of a hummingbird. 
And I ask myself, is this situation really as serious as it feels right now? And what can I do to feel better about this? What's the worst thing that can even happen? And that alone already is usually my my hook out of the, you know, that pulls me out of the water. <laughs> There's many things I could say to this, but I hope this is helpful and 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 makes sense to people listening. Yeah. And I also want to say something else, Shimaya. Well, you know, you also do this, right? You you offer a lot of value. Uh, you're investing your time, your money, your resources, your you know your efforts. Uh, I know a lot goes into this. I, I definitely do. So I appreciate that so very much, and I appreciate you. Appreciate that, and thank you as well. And man, I'm glad I push for uh, those few questions because that uh, illustration of honey, uh, hummingbird was was perfect. So once again, listen to Army Fox Radio talking to our guest, Regina Huber. You can go to her website, transformyourperformance.com. You can also uh, check out her books. She has uh, listed that you can uh, look more about uh, information on uh, Speak Up, Stand Out and Shine, Speak Powerfully in Any Situation. I want to say once again, thanks for your time. It's been awesome. Thank you so much for having me and for asking me uh, wonderful questions that, you know, I think came together into a, a very beautiful conversation. Thank you. And thank you to everybody listening. I appreciate you all. Mm-hmm.